And uh, so uh, I want to talk about some mainstream news uh, now, uh, which you don't, don't usually cover, but I think it's interesting to talk about the VMAs that happened this week. Uh, so uh, I'm sure you were all glued to the TV screens about three o'clock in the morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> to check out uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor Swift and Lady Gaga and all, and all those. Uh, nice so the ceremony was, uh, <laughs> the ceremony was uh, celebrating its 30th year on the air, uh, although for the first time it was uh, uh, done at the new Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Uh, and it did surprisingly well uh, with the viewers. Uh, so the viewers were up 66%, 66 over last year uh, to a, an average of 10.1 million. And of course, the presence of uh, almost every single pop uh, star uh, in the US that has a release out right now uh, was a big help, including uh, Gaga, Katy Perry, as well as as, uh, as Justin Timberlake with a reunion with NSYNC uh, and a uh, controversial Miley Cyrus performance. Uh, so these all came together to, to make a pretty strong uh, um, turnout uh, audience wise anyway and uh, of course in terms of winners that's a sort of a minor point to talking about uh, video of the year justin timberlake uh, best hip-hop video macklemore ryan lewis of course best male video bruno mars locked out of heaven best female videos taylor swift i knew you were trouble uh, i think the best rock video went to 30 seconds to mars uh, but yeah you know the winners are, are the winners and, and it's not that that interesting but i think what's interesting is talking about the relevance of award ceremonies which is uh, always tied to ratings especially in the u.s uh, and we've seen big spikes for the Grammys and we've also seen a big spike for the VMAs this year so is the public getting back into the groove uh, of uh, getting excited about award ceremonies and what could be the driver of that because of course you know appointment viewing in theory is is on, on, the, on the down especially in the states uh, Karim what's your take on that? Oof. Well, I think this one, they've, they've really turned around um, their performance from last year. And I think it's just, it's all about programming and hype, isn't it? So I think yeah. it's all of the things that you just said. They had a great lineup. They had a much better slot in terms of, I think it was Sunday evening, wasn't it? Um, as opposed to a Thursday the year before. Um, so uh, I think they just managed to hype it and get a good lineup. And that still does attract people. I think there's a lot to be yeah. said for curation and programming and big glitzy events. And I think <laughs> there was a lot of Twitter activity around it as well, yeah. which was a good good thing and probably help spread spread awareness as well yeah yeah sure and and darren uh, did you, you know I, I was talking about i was kind of skipping through the winners uh are winners important at this point or is it just about the show and and nobody really cares about who wins the award i don't know i mean i suppose it depends what you measure the um the value of the win on i mean <laughs> you know it's like from an industry side if the win means you sell more records and everything then yeah i suppose uh, the the win is important yeah. to someone um uh, but equally i think these events are just uh, you know i mean you know cream sort of got it right in that sense that it's you know it's an event that's what people want is a big one-off event and people like big one-off events whether it's you know the mtv awards or sports personality of the year in the uk or you know any of these things that are just kind of single single one-off big things that you want to be there for and they've been pretty smart with this i mean let's not forget you know that whole um colbert report kind of moment with uh, Daft Punk supposedly being booked for the VMAs and uh, being pulled from his show and all of that is, you know, clearly is just one big hype. You know, they turned yeah. his show into one big shill for the for the awards and did a very good job because the way in which it was done went very viral and, yeah. you know, all of that stuff just helps drive up the cultural value attached to this stuff. And yeah. equally, you know, he's built, don't they? I mean, whether it's that you know, train crash of the Miley Cyrus bit this year, you know, the point is that sadly now everyone will tune in next year to see what is possibly going to top that, yeah. you know, because there's going to be something and it won't necessarily be planned. It's, you know, it, it, but it'll be something. And so, um, yeah, people will tune in knowing that it's an event and everyone likes an event at the end of the day. I don't think everyone's lost their passion for events in the same way as, you know, I, I think the passion for music is every bit as strong as it was 20 years ago. It's just perhaps not reflected in the way people spend their money. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they don't like music less now. And uh, the same could be said here, but I don't know. I, you know, it's, it's tricky not to look at all of that stuff and just put my head in my hands, really, because there's a, there's a tipping point where the spectacle has overtaken the, you know, the depth and the art form around this stuff. And I, I yeah. find that really rather sad. 